Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Hayoyimi Nedorim Ayin Hey. We are holding a middle of the Amun here, right at the Mishnah. Hayoyimer Leishtay, a fellow turns to his wife and says, Kala Nedorim, you know all vows, Shetaduri, which you will commit yourself to, Mikan Atsha Avoy Mimokim Pliny. So he's planning a trip. He says, look, I'm not going to be around to listen in to your nedarim. And we know that a husband, when he gets word about his wife's nedar, has the option to either be mekayim, to reinforce it, to confirm it, or to be mayfair, to nullify it. Nullify it, you know, going forward. It's not retroactive like Hatoras and Dharam, which undoes the entire thing. Lima Freya, going back in time. Hafara is going forward, breaking it going forward. He says, I'm not going to be around. I'm leaving town for a while and I want to make a pre arrangement. Call on Adharam, Shetaduri Mikan, which you will make. All the Dharam that will take place from. The time that I leave Mikan from here, complain until my return from the other place. So basically, throughout the duration of my absence, all those Nadarim that you will make Harein Kayam, and I want them to be Kayam. I would like to confirm them in advance. Does that work? No. Loy Omar Klum. Nothing has been said, nothing has been done. Why? There are two reasons given. We have the Taisvis on the side who says, look, there is lack of there is lack of Gmiras Das. He's doing it in, the, in advance when he has yet no clue as to what she's going to say. That's not really a, a commitment. That's not a proper declaration. The Ran seems to work with a different concept. He says, a nether, which was already uttered and expressed, can Except Kim can be ratified, but something which is not yet here, it's Loibala Oilam, it's it's yet in, you know on the planning boards, on the drawing boards. Loy Alimi, they're not strong enough to accept Kiyum to be ratified, as the Ran's approach to the Halach. So bottom line is Kiyum in advance of a nether does not work. What about Hafara in advance? Harihin Mufarn, husband says, all future Nadaran shall be nullified, should be disrupted. So it's still pre nether, it's still in advance. He's preempting the nether. Does that work? Raglaza Aimar Mufar, it works. The Afara will nullify the nether when in fact it comes about. You can't do a hafara in advance. Afara only works after the fact, after the nether has been established. Omar Abi Eliezer, I will prove my position. Certainly, Hafara can work in advance as well to prevent the nether from taking place. Look, if a man has the ability to apply Hafara to a nether which is already here and already established, Hafara overrides that, don't you think it can work in advance? To preempt the nether? Loyafer nedarim shalai bol chal iser? Shouldn't it work before the nether came to iser? You would think yes. Amr loy the chachamim responded, that's a good svara, but there is a hekesh in the pasuk, which doesn't allow it. Hafara as hakama only work, or only effective upon a real nether. Another, which is already tangible. Hare you Aimer the Pasuk says, Isha yiki menu, bi isha yife menu. Her husband can ratify, her husband can nullify. We connect the two ideas. Eshabal chal hokim. Indeed, a nether, which carries the option of hakama, i.e., a nether which has already been applied. Bal chal hafer, likewise can. Accept hafara, but loy bolachal hakim, another which is not yet here, which can't accept hakama, 
right? All agree you can't be make him in advance. So that type of situation, likewise cannot incorporate hafara either. Here comes an interesting question. Rebbeza says, "True, Hakama can't work in advance, but hafara could. It could. How does it work? What are the mechanics?" Does he mean that the nether actually will be applied? And when she actually makes the nether, it comes down and it's chal. It gets activated. But immediately, it explodes upon landing because of the pre-existing afara. So we have a nether for a split second, but then it explodes. Or perhaps, shall we say, it never takes off to begin with. Loy chalin klal because of the husband's preempting of that nether because of his hafar in advance, that prevents the nether from actually taking hold at all. It's never born. Lebanaf Kamina, what's the point of discussing this? End of the day, there's no nether here. There is a difference. We know there's something called hat fasa. Reuben commits himself to something. You know, I'm going to be a nazar. Shimon hears that and he copycats. He says, Va'ani, me too. So he's drawing from Ruvain's commitment and applying it to himself. Let's say an Isha committed to being a Nazir. And it so happens to be that her own husband had already issued a hafara in advance. And quite a blessing that hafara is effective. It effectively nullifies the Nazir's commitment made by the Isha post Hafara, right? But we can still speculate. How does this work? What are the mechanics? Does the Hafara prevent the Nazir's commitment from taking hold at all? In which case, if another fellow was standing by and said, Vani, me too, it's nothing. It's worthless because it turns out that the Isha's a nether never had any uh, grounding. It was already preempted by her husband's hafara, which aborted it before it actually came into being. There's nothing to draw from. There's nothing to be matfas on. Suppose a stranger used this Isha's nether as a source for his nether. So if you shall tell me that when a husband preempts his, wife, his wife's nether, it's still land, it's still, you know, here for a split second. After which it becomes disrupted by the pre-existing afar. If that's the way to understand it, the Amr's Chalan, Habit Fisusa. So the other fellow's Hatfasa works because there was something there for a moment. And of course, as Ran explains, Hafaras Baal, unlike Hastaras and Dharm, Hafaras Baal is going forward. So even though the Baal's Hafara crashes away the nether, going forward, but for a split second, it was there. That's sufficient to allow hatfasa. On the other hand, if you say the nether doesn't work at all, hafara aborted it, preempted it, and never allowed it to become activated for a second. So in that sense, we see no nether at all, even for a split second, which doesn't allow for hatfasa. My, which uh, approach is correct? So again. Back to the Mishnah. Hakama prior to the nether doesn't work. Hafara prior to a nether. Chachamim say it does not work. Rebbeza says it does work. How does it work? How does it come about? It preempts the nether at all. The nether doesn't even arrive for a split second, or the future nether arrives and gets disrupted upon landing. Toshma, listen to this right. Back to the Mishnah. Where Rebbeza proves this point as follows. Omer Rebbeza. If you see a husband can apply a fara to another which is already here, so even though you already have another in existence, his afara can override it, don't you think that he can do it in advance before there's actually another? The Gemara figures at this point, what Rabbi Lezim meant was if you can do it after the fact, when it's already here, don't you think you could do it? Before the fact, to prevent it from coming, to prevent the nether from materializing, apparently, according to Rabbi Lezer, 
the pre-existing afar doesn't allow the nether to materialize at all. In which case, now a shayla of atfasa, atfasa would not work. There was never a nether. Shmam and oloi cholam. Apparently it never lands, it never takes off at all. Says the Gemara, mig tani she'en and bain. Let's take a cl- let's take a closer look at the lashon of the Mishnah. Does our blessed then say that a fara should work in advance because even the darim are ainon born will never come into fruition, will never come into existence? In which case you've proved your point. He doesn't say that. Shulay bog tani. The blessed says if another can be effective after. Sorry, if a fara can be effective after the nether is in existence, certainly it could be effective when it's done in advance, before the nether has yet to arrive. That's what he's saying. Adain Leibo has not yet arrived, but perhaps even when you do a far in advance, what happens is that the nether arrives and then explodes upon landing. So you don't really have a raya to your shagat. Toshma, here comes another raya from a Tosefta. We find further dialogue between our and Rabbanon pertaining to this topic. Can Aforah be done in advance of a nether? Omel and Rabbi Lezer, I'm going to prove my point. The answer to that question is yes. Look at any person. Forget about husband and wife. A person on his own nether. Uma b'mokhi. She'ein me for nidri atzmai. Misha nadar. We know for a fact that a person I cannot just go ahead and nullify his own nether. So once he makes a nether, he has to go, you know, look for the for the chacham to um, take care of the nether. Right? So despite that limitation, a person on his own personal nether, certainly he can't just Go ahead and undo his nether. Misha nether after he makes his nether. Once it's here, he has to look for help to get rid of the nether. Even though he can, you know, point to the fact that he overlooked something, etc. You have to find a chacham to be matter. Still and all, right? Despite that being so, look what happens. A person can preempt a future nether by using the toast mechanism. We discussed this back on the Chav Gimel. By, by applying the Maida system, by declaring in advance, look, any nether that I will make this coming year is null and void. In which case, even if you'll forget throughout the year, I'll make a nether. It constitutes a toast. It's a mistake. Because he doesn't really want to make nether. He already declared his intention as such. So a person has the ability to turn any future Nadarm of his of his own into a toast which automatically become null and void. So even though you can't do it after the fact, once you make a nether, you're done. You have to go to Chacham to be mater. But there is a mechanism in place, there's a system, there's a method to preempt in advance, to make it a toast in advance. You can disrupt your future nadarm. If you get up and declare in advance, I don't want those nadarim. So what do we see? Preemption is stronger than nullification after the fact. Certainly a husband with a wife. Where we say he does. He can be made for his wife's nether after the fact. Wouldn't you think that a lens to reason that he can do the same before the fact, if he can do it afterwards, when it's already a reality. Certainly he can preempt it in advance. End of argument. Let's focus on the wording and discern the, the exact, precise method which Rebelezer is using. Back to our question. How do you preempt? You prevent it from landing to begin with? Or does it land and then explodes? My love, the ishto, do me delay. The fact that her blesser is comparing one to the other. One's own ability 
to be moiser and moido in advance. And what does that do? It prevents a future nether from being chal. It turns it into a toast. Right? It never takes off. And we're comparing that to how far on one's wife's nether in advance of actually making the nether. Let's compare the two things entirely. We're assuming they're on the same track. If you bring a wife one to the other, my love the ishtoy, do me delay. Apparently, the method applied by your wife, a far in advance of the nether, works in similar fashion to the masiros moido pertaining to one's own own nether. Mahud loy just as the masiros moido, this declaration in advance of one one's own personal nether, prevents it from actualizing at all. Likewise, a far in advance of his wife's nether works the same way. It prevents it from coming about, about at all. So it's like more not necessarily. Perhaps the you know the connection is just a sort of a loose connection, more of a conceptual connection. We find that you know beforehand is is uh, is easier than after the fact, and that was Rebelez's point. But perhaps you know each system works slightly different than the other. Loy Hakadisa Vakadisa, the system employed by Maida indeed prevents it from working at all, but perhaps by Hafara, it's not so. Sure, you can do it in advance, but perhaps you're not going to prevent it from coming about at all. It comes and it disappears. Tashma, here comes another Raya. To prove this point, that it's not Chal at all. Amr, Lord, 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 here are the Chachamim. It's their turn. They are presenting their argument to Rabbi We're going to prove to you that this formula isn't always true. It doesn't always hold water. Sometimes you can remove something after the fact, despite the fact you can't prevent it from coming. Likewise, by Hafara, perhaps you can nullify the nether after the fact, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can employ the same means to prevent it from coming. Uma mikvah. Let's take a look at the classic mikvah example. Shemalo esatme mitumasam. What does a mikvah do? What is the primary function of a mikvah? To be matire tummy. So once he's tummy, it's after the fact, jumps into the mikvah, the tumma dissipates. So despite the fact that a mikvah can work after the fact, it can't work before the fact to immunize him from tumma, <laughs> to protect him from future tumma, it doesn't work that way. For instance, if one dips into the mikvah, it's not going to immunize him, it's not going to protect him from future tumma. And some are actually not even good as the next three lines, but let's uh, just say it anyways. Adam she'en ma'ala es atzmein metumasam. So basically, this already proves its point. That you see that something can work after the fact, but not beforehand. But according to the gersa that we have inside, it's sort of a run-on argument. They're pretty much going to assemble an interesting arrangement, a kabochayim, to disprove of So when it comes to mikvah, it works after the fact. It removes... Tuma, although it can't prevent Tuma in advance. Adam she'en mal esatmei mitumasan. On the other hand, we find that a person, suppose um, he swallows a a ring which is tummy, and then he spits it out. It's not going to help it much. It's still tummy, so he's not going to remove Tuma from something which is tummy. Einoidinhu. Certainly, it lends to reason. If you can't uh, remove tumma, a person doesn't have the ability to disrupt tumma from this ring that he swallowed. It stays, you know, in the same status. If you can't remove something that's already here, certainly you can't prevent something from coming. You can't prevent the tumma from landing on that ring. So let's say he's where he's, he swallowed that ring. This time the ring was tummy. It's within his system while he walks into an oil hamis. A place which has a mace. Halacha is, that ring is now protected because it's embedded within the person. That's the halacha discussed in Chulun Nain Aleph. Take a look over there. So we see an irony. On the one hand, mikvah works one way. How does mikvah work? It remedies the situation. Your tummy, the mikvah is matar. But it can't prevent future tumor, you jump to the mikvah and then you touch a mace to your, uh, your tummy. So it works afterwards, still it can't work beforehand, 
certainly a person who can't remove Tumah from a, an item which he's interacting with, even if he swallows the item, it stays tummy. So he can't do that. He doesn't have the ability to work after the fact. Certainly, of course, it lends to reason that he can't prevent it in advance, which will mean that if he has that tabas within him and he walks into oil a mess, he shouldn't protect it. And we know that's not true. He does protect it. So according to this Gersa, basically the Gemara is, is proving that, you know, things are not comparable. It seems ironic. Mikvah is treated one way, a person is treated the other. So apparently, it's not one size fits all. Every situation, every scenario, every circumstance works differently. Mikvah has its own guidelines. It works after the fact, but not before the fact. Adam swallowing a ring, well, that works before the fact, not after the fact. And as Ron explains, apparently it's not, you know, dependent on Kula and Chumrah. Everything has its own system. So likewise, when it comes to Afaris and Dharam, say the Rabbanu to Rabbalezer, you can't employ, you know, the Kalvachimer method to prove your point. Just because a husband can remove a nether after the fact by way of Afara, who's to say that, you know, that should empower him to do Afara before the nether comes about? You would think, you know, it lends to reason that if you do it after it's here, you can prevent it from coming. It's true, it's a nice Svara, but we see it doesn't necessarily hold water in terms of mikvah, in terms of the other things. So you can't really use that kalvachimer to prove anything. But on, bottom line is, back to our question, according to the blood, it does work in advance. How does it work? Shema menolei chaylen, apparently. It works as follows. The nether never arrives. Because just look at the way the Rabbana responded to him. They're proving from mikvah. Right? From this whole, uh, you know, kalvachimer configuration. They're disproving your blazer's idea. That uh, mikvah can work after the fact, but can't prevent tuma from coming. Likewise, when it comes to hafaras and darim, your hafara can't prevent the nether from coming. Apparently, they understood that according to the blazer, it does prevent. It prevents it from coming at all. The, the hafara in advance prevents the nether's arrival altogether, in which case, pertaining to our question, if another person decides to use her nether as a source for his nether, as a hatfasa, it doesn't work because once the afara was done in advance, it preempts any future nadara and doesn't even allow them through the door. So we're actually right in the middle of a b'risa, which we, Be'ezus Hashem, will uh, you know, conclude tomorrow. We'll see uh, which direction it takes. See you then, Hatzlach Rava, and Surah Stavis.